Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Fan. Today we're looking at a write-up published in Aging in September that provides an interesting perspective on iron levels in our body and whether high levels of iron are related to reduced health span and increased mortality. So is it possible that donating blood has a positive impact on health span? Let's have a look at the paper. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Dr. Sinclair tweeted about the paper. And here is the paper, Iron, an Underrated Factor in Aging. It was written by Dennis Mangan, who is perhaps better known as P.D. Mangan. Iron is an essential element in virtually all living organisms. It is reactive, which makes it very useful, but also potentially harmful. Iron accumulates with age, is associated with age-related diseases, and shortens lifespans of several model organisms. Blocking iron absorption does extend lifespan and may be implicated in other life-extending interventions. So the conclusion is that maintaining iron in the low normal range may be important for health span. Let's have a quick introduction to iron in our body. Iron is an essential element and is used in producing ATP in hemoglobin and other reactions within the cell. However, its reactivity, which makes it useful, also makes it dangerous, where it causes damage to DNA and other parts of the cell by generating free radical species. Most of the iron is bound up in proteins, which make it safe. And in particular, in humans, this is done in ferritin. Ferritin is a hollow globular protein, which serves to store iron in a non-toxic form. Ferritin from the cells can move into the blood, where its level can be measured. Ferritin levels in the blood are thought to be a quite a good proxy for the levels within cells. And this is how iron levels are typically measured. Humans, like many other species, have no systematic way of ridding themselves of excess iron. Hence, it builds up as we age. There are a number of ways in which excess iron can impact health span and lifespan. The first of these is through the activation of mTOR. mTOR integrates nutrients and stress signals to decide whether to grow or to activate autophagy. The inhibition of mTOR by rapamycin has been shown to extend lifespan and health span in animal models. Growth factors like glucose and amino acids that activate mTOR promote aging. Their absence or the presence of stress slows aging. Iron is one such growth factor, as it is required for growth and activates mTOR, whereas a shortage of iron downregulates mTOR. Even if ferritin is in the currently accepted normal range, depleting iron improves glucose tolerance, insulin resistance, and markers of cardiovascular disease. In experimental animal models, blocking iron extends lifespan. Aspirin has a number of benefits, including reducing the risk of cancer. In observational studies, it's been shown that regular aspirin users have lower blood ferritin. As cancer cells are iron hungry, this may be part of the anti-cancer mechanism. And metformin, which has been shown to have lifespan and health span extension in mice and is now being tested in human, decreases heme production in humans and regulates their iron redox status, which may be part of its mechanisms of action. Another area where iron may play a role is in calorie restriction. Calorie restriction is the most robust life extension intervention known. There are many mechanisms that can be used to explain this, such as its effect on insulin and IGF-1, mTOR and other factors. CR also affects iron metabolism. In a number of studies on animal models up to rhesus monkeys, it has been shown to reduce the levels of iron found in brain, liver and kidney, and may be one of the mechanisms of actions for CR. Heterochronic parabiosis is the joining of blood systems of two organisms, often mice or rats, of different ages. When this is done, the younger mice see a degradation in health, and this may be due to the excess of iron in the blood of the older mice. In fact, just diluting the plasma of older mice with saline and 5% albumin leads to rejuvenation of muscle, liver, and brain, as shown by the convoys. Therapeutic plasma exchange is a similar process that is performed on humans. 
We talked to Dr. Dobri Kiprov, who runs a lab offering the therapy in San Francisco earlier about the process. Please watch the video, which is linked in the description for more details. In summary, blood is taken from a person, the plasma is removed and replaced with saline and albumin, then returned to the body. When serum from older adults was tested, it strongly reduced the proliferation of mice muscle cells, while after a single session of TPE, the serum from the same patient reversed this inhibition. Related to this, accumulation of iron delays muscle regeneration and suppresses the differentiation of muscle stem cells. If TPE and the plasma dilution seen by the convoys can lead to rejuvenation effect, what is being removed that allows this? Iron is a good candidate. Although the blood cells, including the iron containing red blood cells, are returned to the patients, after TPE, the patients do show a high rate of iron deficiency. One study showed that 60% were anemic, and all of them decreased serum iron. Other components of plasma are removed in this process as well as iron, but reduced iron may be the cause of some of the impact. As hemoglobin in the blood is the main depot for iron in the body, the replacement of blood after donating depletes the body's iron stores. Several studies have shown, even after accounting for blood donors being generally healthier than average, that donating blood reduces mortality risk and that each additional annual donation was associated with a 7.5% reduction in mortality. And that blood donation is correlated with a decrease in iron in adult men. Here is the study that was referenced in the previous slide. Blood donation and blood donor mortality after adjustment for healthy donor effect. In this graph taken from the study, we can see mortality rate ratio against annual number of donations. The reference ratio was set to 1.5 to 2.5 donations per year. The two lines are with and without adjustment for healthy donors, but in both cases we can see that mortality is reduced with increased blood donations. Iron seems to be related to aging, it accumulates with age and is associated with age-related diseases. Removal of iron from plasma is rejuvenating and blood donations seem to reduce mortality. It seems that iron is associated with aging and controlling body iron stores may be an important way to extend human lifespan. A lot of the evidence for iron is associated, but it is really interesting. Identifying individual courses is always difficult, and there are not compelling reasons for drug companies to sponsor studies in this area. The data that I found most interesting was the study on blood donors and reduced mortality. Music